Hi, my name is Callie Chappelle, and in this video, I'll be talking about logistic regression. This video was made for Bio 47, which is Introduction to Research in Ecology and Evolution at Stanford University. This course was taught in spring of 2020. We'll be talking about logistic regression in this video, where we'll be comparing a quantitative or continuous independent predictor to a categorical dependent response. Now, thinking back to linear regression, let's say that we were interested in comparing, for example, temperature, ambient temperature, to the presence or absence of flowers. If we were using a linear approach, we would predict flower presence with some intercept, some slope against light or temperature. But this doesn't work. Oops. But this doesn't work because the underlying data isn't normally distributed. Right? This is not normally distributed because you only have two choices, flowers present or flowers absent. It's binomial. So what do you do when the data doesn't meet the assumptions of using a linear regression? Or it's obvious that you aren't using it in ANOVA because your X is not categorical. Well, we can't transform it to make it normally distributed because it's not continuous. So what we need to do is use an extended version of linear regression called generalized linear models. So response variables can follow many different distributions, not just normal distributions, distributions such as the Poisson, multinomial, or in this case, logistic. So when we want to understand the relationship between a continuous X and a categorical Y, we'll use a generalized linear model with an underlying distribution of the response variable as binomial. And by binomial, I mean one of two options. In our case, for example, in our example, flowers not present or flowers present. So coming back to this example with our logistic approach, what we'll use is we'll use a logit function of flowers present uh, in order to make this prediction. And so really what's going on here is it's like, for example, taking the logarithm of the probability of flowers being present or not present um, and using that to predict the relationship. And the way that you do that in R is by using this function, not LM, but GLM, where it's just like before, we've got our Y tilde X, and we define the family of underlying distributions to be binomial. So in class, I'm gonna have students at, uh, enter some examples of two different uh, variables that we could use logistic regression to study. But because this is just a video, we're not going to do that. And so the example that we have of logistic re regression in examples.r is asking the question, does nectar volume affect bacterial presence? So nectar volume is a continuous variable on the x, and bacterial presence, bacteria being present, a 1, or not present, a 0, uh, being the categorical variable on the y. So just to um, jump to the ending, and I'm actually going to go through this in R in a second, but when we summarize our, our GLM, what we get is we get the call, which is a reminder of what our, what our model is, that we've got bacterial presence on the Y, nectar microliters or nectar volume on the X, and we're using a binomial underlying distribution. And so what we want to look for is our p-value, which is right here. And um, in some of the other tests, we interpreted things like r squared or the slope, but in this case, where you just need to interpret the p-value, we can see this p-value is greater than 0 0.05, so we can not reject the null hypothesis and cannot say um, that there is a relationship between nectar volume and bacterial presence. So let me go to our studio now and give an example of this. So I'm looking at the section in... R, let's see here, in examples.r where we're looking at logistic regression. All right, so let's just walk through this together. So the first line just loads the data. Uh, we are loading the correct plotting functions. And let's just take a look at bacterial CFU per microliter. So in the original data set, you can see that bacterial CFU per microliter, or the density of bacteria in each flower, is a continuous variable. But you can see this continuous variable has many, many zeros. So most of the flowers had zero bacteria, and some had some bacteria. So this flower had 1,145 colony forming units per microliter. So one thing you might wonder is, well, Maybe I don't care about the exact quantity. Maybe I just want to know if 
the treatments differed in the quantity uh, if in the presence or absence of bacteria. So what we can do is we can use this where we can say, hey, take MEM data, this column, bacterial CFU for microliter, and tell me if the number is greater than zero or not. So if I run that, what you get is false, 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 true, 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 etc. So as you can see, the first observations here all have zero. So if the question is, is the value greater than zero, it would be false, 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 and this one would be true. So if we look at the output of this, we can see it's false, 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 true. All right, that's interesting, but what this gives us is just a vector of values or a list of values, but really what we want is we want a new column in our data frame that has this true false information. So we can use that to run our test and make our plots. So this next line does that. It just does exactly what we had here, but it appends a new column to the data frame that says that bacteria present. So if I look at min data, I can see there's a new column in data called back presence, which is just this vector, um, or you can think of it like a list if you're a Python person um, that is now appended to that data frame. All right, so let's just remind ourselves when we head mim data, you can see that there's that new column that has bacterial presence there, and then everything else is the same. So if we're interested in just plotting the data, we can take a look at what that looks like, and we can see that, yes, indeed, the y-axis, we only have two, one of two values, a zero or a one, representing true and false, and we have our continuous variable of nectar volume here on the x, and just looking down here, let's see here, nectar volume is right down here, and you can see that is indeed a continuous variable, so this checks out. We can run our logistic regression, which is this line, so we're running GLM, we're defining our y, bacterial presence, we're defining our x, nectar microliter, and we're defining our underlying distribution, which is binomial, using the GLM function, and we're saving the output of that GLM function as model back presence nectar, and I can just run that now that I've run this, and it gives me some information here um, that I need, but I kind of want the full answer, so I'm going to run the summary function of that, and that gives me a little bit more information, where again, our p-value is here. The last thing we might want to do is draw a regression line onto that data. And so this additional line here of code draws this line. So just wanted to walk you through logistic regression in R from our examples.r. Hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one about chi-square.